Hello, welcome to today's episode of Oboe Reviews. A little different, I usually do clarinets, but you know, every now and then I get one of these little bad boys in the shop. So, what is this thing? As you can see, it's a uh, case. But seriously, what is it? You can see from here that it's one of those really cool Pan American Band Instrument Company logos on the case. Um, so, right now it's time to pop this bad boy open and uh, see what's going on inside. So, first off we just see a sea, endless expanse of purple velvet. Really neat, because purple is a royal color of Europe, right? So this thing's meant for royalty or something like that. Anyhow, you can see from uh, the instrument itself, you can see that says Pan American. And what does this say? It says Pan American. So, it tells you that this is pro most likely the original case. Now, this case uh, it really helps to date the instrument, actually. Do the, like, the weird clippy thing here, and the way that the instrument fits inside, how it's not like a form-fitting thing like they have in modern times. It's more likely uh, from like the 1920s or 30s, which is nice to know, right? Although, I always thought Pan Americans were a little bit later, but I guess they're not. Anyhow, Pan American um, made uh, clarinets as well and probably other instruments that I don't know of. But know for sure they made plenty of oboes, plenty of clarinets. Interestingly enough, Pan Americans have the uh, that real famous and rare so-called propeller wood clarinet made by, they said it was made by wood of propellers in airplanes in World War II. Of course, that was just hogwash. But they made Pan, uh, Pan American made propeller wood oboes as well as clarinets. I don't have either, so I can't show you them. Now, more about the case. We got a little uh, thingy here for stuff like dust. We have this thing, which I guess would, um, I don't know. I, I, uh, it's got like an imprint of something on it. I have no, I guess one of those uh, lyre instrument holder or music holder things, or you could like try to slide a reed in there. I'm not too sure what the heck that thing's for. But, you know, the rest of the case, it's one of those solid things. Got these uh, typical latches with that sort of closure. So it's, it's nice. Um, you know, handle, nice handle, all that good stuff. Now let's talk about the uh, instrument itself. As you can see, it's made out of wood with silver plated keys, and it's got those nice uh, metal tenon caps right there. Fortunately, uh, the wood itself is not that great, as you got some ginormous cracks like that one there, and uh, that one there, and that one there, and yeah, so this thing has like three. Very large cracks, which uh, if you look inside, which you can't, but if you did, you'd find that they went actually all the way through to the bore. So it's a pretty savage crack. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a testament to the quality of the wood or not, possibly. Although it could be, you know, how it was stored or something. Obviously it was repaired at one point because somebody valued this thing enough to repair it. The lower joint has no cracks, neither does the bell, so it's, uh, you know, oftentimes this thing up here cracks in oboes, I, that part specifically, like the t first half, of, top half of the upper joint, just the thing that happens. So I would say that the wood, maybe not the best, because I've seen, I've seen clarinets stored in worse conditions with less cracks, so, yeah. Anyhow, as you can see, it's one of those, um, Basic, uh, I believe they're called modified conservatory uh, system key systems, with just nothing on that left-hand pinky side, and really nothing anywhere. Real basic uh, stuff, honestly. Mm, it's only got a single or double octave key, whatever you call it. It doesn't have like the triple, quadruple, all that junk. It does have the cool open ring system, which <clears throat> nowadays you never even see. I, I haven't seen open ring since like the freaking 19, I don't know, 1940s or something. Mm, I, I, at some point, Oboists just decided, hey, we don't like these open rings. So you know what? They stopped making them open rings, and nowadays they're almost entirely like that or they're plateau keyed, sometimes a little hole in the middle for God knows what reason. So now that you've seen clarinet, or what is this thing called, an oboe, yeah, it's, uh, I would say it's, it's, eh, it's a fairly decent thing. Pan American wasn't known for making the best things, more like just kind of intermediate, uh, higher beginner, high beginner, low intermediate sort of thing. Um, you know, 
especially with the key system of the modified conservatory, this thing is definitely meant for a beginner. So, I mean, I would not recommend this if you're like in a, you know, Chicago symphony or whatever, but if you're just a learning, the why the heck not? Just stay away from these cracks because those are bad. All right, so I'm going to go find myself a reed. It's somewhere in this house. You can just look at my awesome chair with all the junk that's around it. While I search in vain for a reed with which to play. Whoops. All right, so we're back in business. I've got this thing nicely assembled, and here I've got myself a reed. Well, what that kind of reed is this? It is a terrible, terrible reed, which I do not recommend for anybody at all. It is a um, Chartier synthetic reed. I believe this is a soft, and uh, yeah, here's how it sounds. Essentially, you're playing a very terrible kazoo. Now, let's try to stuff this reed on in this Pan American oboe. And so, oh, by the way, that's all my shoe cleaning stuff. Sorry. And look at this. Oh, what is going on? What's happening? Well, this thing is loose. Now, why is it loose? Because uh, usually oboes have like a little metal insert up here, which this thing is actually missing, so reeds don't fit in at all. Which means that you got to... Put your camera down, go find yourself a piece of paper, or tissue, or whatever, and wrap it around um, your thing, your reed, in order to make it fit inside that uh, reed receptacle. And, um, there, so, we've done that, that's a piece of tissue, now let's do some playing. Obviously, it's not actually me. I don't know how to play oboe. I just um, like to waste your time. So thanks for watching this episode of Oboe Reviews. I'm Dave LeBlanc. Make sure to like, subscribe, and comment for more of these wonderful videos where I just basically waste your time talking about something you don't really care about. Thanks. See ya. Bye.